Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This morning we begin by looking at the topic on triple A principles and configuration. Triple A stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. So we want to understand what uh, that is. Really, uh, this topic also falls under network security. You will be configuring triple A in your network in order to authenticate users who can access different uh, uh, resources uh, in your network. So I will read the forward. User management is one of the most basic security management requirements for any network. So triple A, authentication, authorization, and accounting is a management framework that provides a security mechanism for authorizing some users to access specified resources and recording the operations of these users. So you access, then we account. That accounting is what we call recording the operations of what you've been able to access for how long, at which time, and so on and so forth. So AAA is widely used because of its good scalability and easy implementation of centralized management. Centralized management of user information. Why we say centralized management is because AAA uses the client server architecture. So you have a AAA server which can be able now uh, to store the user information and perform authentication, authorization, and accounting. AAA can be implemented through multiple protocols, but in actual applications, the remote authentication, dial-in user service, commonly referred to as the RADIUS protocol, is the most commonly used to implement AAA. This course describes the basic concepts implementation, basic configuration, and typical application scenario of AAA. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to understand the fundamentals of AAA, describe the application scenarios of AAA, understand the fundamentals of RADIUS, get familiar with basic configurations of AAA. So let's have an overview of AAA. As we've said, AAA stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. It provides a management mechanism for network security. So what is authentication? What is authentication? Authentication is proving that you are who you claim to be. You are who you claim to be. So this one determines, determines which users can access the network. Normally, uh, authentication is done using things like username or password or any other unique attribute that can be used to identify a person. Uh, for example, biometrics. Then we have authorization. Now, after we've proved that you are who you are and you're allowed to access uh, our network, then authorization will determine, will determine which, uh, which services, which services you can access, which services you can access. I normally give an example when I talk about authorization of a visitor. If a visitor knocks on my door, I'll ask who's there. They'll tell me it's Anthony. Oh, okay, I know Anthony, so I'll open, I'll open the door. And now Anthony can come into my house. But now, uh, Anthony is allowed to access maybe the sitting room and the, the, the bathroom. Hmm? But from us, who come from Western, we don't appreciate when they trespass to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. So authorization really is, <laughs> Maurice, I hope you get me. Eh? Uh, so authorization is determining what, what rooms can the visitor be able to access. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, teacher, I didn't get you. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, Maurice. That was not very important. Uh, okay. <laughs> 
So that, that is authorization, really. What you can be able to access, which services can you be able to access? Then we have accounting. Accounting is like me in my house having a CCTV. Uh, so I have a CCTV in my kitchen so that if my visitor trespasses, I'm able to prove <laughs> that he trespassed. So accounting will record, will record network resource utilization. Utilization. Uh, so accounting will record information such as uh, the time, uh, the duration, and anything that you, you, you accessed when you accessed network resources. Now, you might think of this uh, as far-fetched, but um, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the institutions that use AAA uh, is the internet service provider, internet service provider. Now, how does the internet service provider use AAA? Mm. So normally, when you connect to your internet, the, you have to be authenticated. For example, if you're using your mobile phone, they use uh, that as your, as your, they use your number, your mobile phone number, mobile phone number to authenticate you. Uh, is this, is this number legit? Is it active? Uh, so we authenticate you through that. Then authorization, we now want to see, okay, do you have data bundles? Hmm? authorization we want to check do you have do you have data bundles then which bundles which bundles are this which bundles are this so for example uh, recently you were loaded with educational edu educational data bundles hmm. so if you have educational data bundles then you can only access educational resources on the internet. Are you getting the point? So that is what we call authorization. Authorization. Then accounting will monitor, monitor your data usage. Data usage. Mm -hmm. Monitor your data usage. If you, for example, exhaust, exhaust your data bundles, then you are disconnected. So that is the work of accounting. Is that clear? Mm. Mm. So when you, are, when you have a home fiber, Safaricom has been very, uh, has been very aggressive with fiber to the home project. FTTH. Mm -hmm. So when you have a fiber and you have a wireless access router there, then that router will be authenticated by the AAA server at Safaricom. Mm -hmm. Then they look at what you are allowed to access. Then they'll monitor the bandwidth that you consume. Mm -hmm. through the AAA server. So recently when we went to visit the uh, Huawei training center at the communications authority, uh, we actually were shown uh, uh, the architecture, the architecture of uh, uh, the architecture of a mobile telecommunication network. And indeed, uh, uh, one of the, one of the uh, equipment or network equipment that was there was the AAA server. So it does those three. Okay. So, uh, oh, okay. So this is the common architecture for, uh, for AAA. Really, you need to understand that uh, we have three we have three things on uh, the triple A network architecture. The first one is the user. So you who wants to access network resources. 
The second one is what we call the NAS. The NAS is the network access server, the network access server. Normally, the network access server is used to collect and manage user access requests in a centralized manner. And uh, most of the time, the network access server really is the network equipment, like a router that is used to connect you uh, to, the, to the internet or to other parts of the network. Is that clear? So the NAS normally uh, is going to be a, a router. So here at the user, we are talking of your, uh, uh, here at the user, we are talking of you accessing the, uh, uh, the network. Then we have the NAS that is going to connect you to the internet. Then after that, we have the triple A server. The triple A server. Mm -hmm. The triple A server. So the triple A server is now used to do authentication, authorization, and accounting. So those are the main, uh, those are the main, uh, three main uh, components of the triple A architecture that you should be aware of. Okay, now there's, a, there's also the concept of domains. There's also the concept of domains. Now, for example, we can see here, we have user one at domain one. So normally we, yes, Maurice, you have a question or comment? Yeah, yes, uh, teacher. Just wanted to confirm, uh, rather mm -hmm. to ask, mm -hmm. is, is, is billing um, part of, uh, uh, okay, is, is, is billing happening at the triple S server, part of the authentication? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, you, yes, you might, have, uh, you, you might have a separate server for billing, but really it has to communicate with the triple S server, which does the accounting in order to know when the balance is depleted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. So normally we want to create common uh, security measures for a group of people rather than for individuals. So for example, we might have what we call a group called student, another group called staff, another group called maybe researchers etc so that we have a common uh, uh, authentication scheme for them a common authorization and accounting scheme for them are you getting the point now that group is what we call a domain a domain so normally we will have uh, uh, we will have what we call a user a username for example caris then a domain delimiter so this is just called a delimiter like at it can also be an or, for example, like that. But uh, the most commonly used domain delimiter is at. So Caris, at, then student. So it means that this user we've created called Caris belongs to the student group or domain. And therefore, uh, we will apply the authentication, uh, uh, authorization, and accounting scheme uh, that is similar to all the to all the students. Is that okay? Okay, just give me a second. Okay, so have we understood the concept of domains? Have we understood the concept of domains? Now, generally, uh, as, as, as we're going to see later, uh, uh, Huawei devices provide two, two uh, default, two default, two default domains, two default domains. The first one is called default. This one is used for general, general users. The second one is called default underscore admin, used for network admins. So what that means is if we create a user called Caris, 
if we create a user called Caris without including the domain, without including this, we are not including at student. We just create them like that. Then if this is a common user, they are going to join the default domain. If they are an admin, then they're going to be added to what? Default admin domain. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay. Okay, so I think it's important that I just mentioned this, that when receiving a user access request, NAS determines the domain to which the user belongs based on the username and performs user management and control based on the AAA schemes that has been configured for the what? For the domain. So that is what I've just told you. Okay, so let's now look at what authentication is and the different types of authentication that we have. So as we have said, authentication is used to prove that you are who you claim to be. Most of the time in networks, it's simply done using a username and a password. So the user will send a username and a password to the network access server. Now, authentication can be performed by the network access server. When authentication is performed here, then that kind of authentication is called local authentication. Otherwise, the NAS can send the username and password further to the AAA server, to the AAA server. Then the AAA server will send the results, the authentication results. When authentication is done here at the AAA server, then we refer to that kind of authentication as as remote authentication, as remote authentication. Otherwise, the last type of authentication is referred to as non-authentication. As the name suggests, this is where uh, users don't need to be authenticated to access network resources. Of course, this is highly discouraged because it does not provide any security uh, uh, mechanism for your network. Uh -huh. Now, normally, remote authentication is implemented using uh, one of these protocols. The first one is said is called RADIUS, but Huawei have their own proprietary protocol called, so you'll meet this, that can also be used. Uh, 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 simply, what, what these protocols do is, they, is that they allow the communication this communication here, this communication between the NAS and the AAA server. So it is enabled by one of those protocols. Mm. This Huawei protocol, I think, is called Huawei Terminal Access Controller Access Control Server Protocol. Not sure whether that is correct. I taught it in HCIP, uh, and I think, uh, if I remember correctly, that is what it means. Huawei Terminal Access Control, Access Control Server. Okay. So look here, as we've said, as we've said, we we do um, uh, we do control, we do configure uh, authentication schemes to domains. So for example, we can say. If any user is in domain one, we want to use none authentication. If they are in domain two, we want to use local authentication. If we are in if they are in domain three, then we want to use remote authentication. So that's normally how we configure that. Okay, let's go ahead and now look at authorization. Authorization specifies uh, what network resources a user can access. Just like 
authentication, we have three modes of authorization. Non-authorization, where you do not uh, uh, limit what users can access. Local authorization, when the authorization is done at the, at the network access server. And finally, remote authorization, when that is done at the AAA server. Triple A sub. Mm. Now, authorization information includes things like the user group, the domains, the VLAN IDs, the SCL number, etc. Remote authorization can also be done through radius, just like I showed you. That communication between NAS and Triple A here, uh, it can be done through radius or through the Huawei terminal access control access control server protocol. Now, there's something that is important. Uh, what happens, what do you think will happen if, uh, if we've configured, if we've configured on this particular device, we've configured both local, uh, local authorization and remote authorization. Which one do you think will be prioritized between the two? Between local and remote? According to me, I think it's uh, local. Okay, thank you for the trial. Uh, uh, the thing is, when you've configured both, then remote authentication is going to override is going to override local authorization so that is the correct position uh, for that so please remember that okay and then we have accounting unlike authentication unlike authentication and authorization accounting can only be done in two modes it's either you're not accounting, called non-accounting, or you're using the AAA server to do the accounting. And so that is what you call remote accounting, remote accounting. As you really might have thought of it that way, we can't do accounting on the NAS because the NAS has limited storage and processing resources. So accounting is quite heavy and it will consume a lot of uh, network resources. So the router cannot be able to do accounting. So that's why we don't have local accounting. You only have non-accounting and remote and remote accounting. So I hope that is clear. Again, remote accounting is done either using radius or the Huawei protocol. Okay, so let's look at Radius and how it works. Uh, I'm not sure whether I can be able to. Uh, okay, so uh, this is what happens as step number one. Eh? So the user, the user will send their username and password to the network access server. Then the network access server will send that username and password to the radius server. Then the radius server is going to respond to the NAS on whether the username and password has matched or has failed. And after that, the NAS is going to respond to the user. Hey, login successful or unsuccessful, like that. Now, in case the login is successful, the NAS is going further to send what we call an accounting start request. Accounting start request. Then the radio server is going to respond with accounting start response. 
So after, after the accounting start response has been received by the NAS, the NAS is now going to allow the user to be able to access the network resources. After the user is done with accessing network resources, they'll send a logout message. When the NAS receives it, it's going to forward uh, a, a, or generate an accounting stop request and send it to the radio server. Accounting stop request. Then the radio server is going to respond with accounting stop response. And finally, the NAS is going to send to the user A, a, a notification telling them that they now are done accessing the network resources. So that's how RADIUS works. Now, generally, uh, RADIUS achieves this uh, RADIUS achieves this using what we call the client-server architecture. In this particular case, the NACs the NAS acts as the client, while the radius server acts as the what? As the server. As the server. So here we've met uh, four uh, protocol packets. The first one is called the accounting response. Start. Next one is called accounting response stop packets. Then we also have we also have which one? Sorry. Accounting request. Start and Accounting request stop. So please remember those packets and uh, remember when they are sent. So here, when we do the accounting start request, accounting start request, then we are sending these packets. Accounting request start. Okay. So these are the common application scenarios for uh, for NAS. One of them is what we gave an example of for the ISP. In order to allow you to access the internet, you have to send your uh, your request to the NAS. That is your username and your password. The NAS is going to send it to the radius server, the radio server is going to respond, then the NAS is going to respond to you on whether you're able to access the internet or not. If the authentication was successful, then they are going to allow you to access the internet. So the other case here is on local authentication and authorization for admin users. So this is something you'll be doing a lot as uh, junior network engineers, configuring local authentication and authorization for your colleagues uh, in order to give them rights to access network resources uh, for the purpose of uh, management, really. Uh, so here what happens is, uh, for example, you want uh, a, a colleague to be able to access the router or network resources through telnet or through SSH. So to do that, you have to configure uh, one of your network resources, like the router, as the NAS. And therefore, uh, that network administrator is going to send uh, their username and password. If they're authenticated, they can now be able to access other network resources 
through Telnet or SSH. Okay. So configuration, how do we configure triple A? We've already uh, met, we've already met this, uh, this command before because we've created users before. So you've been seeing this command triple A. So you use it on system view. When you press enter, then you are able to choose or to create an authentication scheme. So how to create an authentication scheme? You enter the command authentication hyphen scheme, then you give it a name. For example, authentication scheme student. Then you also create an authentication mode. The authentication mode is the mode by which uh, the NAS is going to communicate with uh, with radius so or really uh, whether we are going to use local or we are going to use remote authentication so when you're using remote you can either use the huawei protocol or the radius protocol otherwise if you want authentication to be done on this device then you can choose the local option by default authentication mode is by default, the authentication mode is what? Local authentication. Okay. So how to create a domain is also easy. You must be in the triple A view. Then you use the keyword domain. Then you give it a domain name. For example, domain student. Now in the domain view here, you have to specify the authentication scheme. So for example, authentication scheme, student, the one that we created in the previous slide. So this will bind the authentication scheme to the domain. Otherwise, once you're done with that, you need to create the user. So the command is local user, then the username, then password, cipher, then the password. We've already done this severally. So for example, local user, Caris, password, cipher, who are away at one, two, three. So if we use the at delimiter, if we use the at delimiter, then we can add them to the domain. Hmm? If we don't use it, they are going to be added to the default domain. So when you're creating a user, when you're creating a user, remember you have to be on the triple A view. So the command is local user caris. Then if you want them, if you want to add them to the student domain, and then you have to write that caris at student. Then password, cipher, example, we one, two, three, like that. So if you leave out this, then they're going to be added to the default domain. Okay, now after creating a user, one thing that you must do is to enable the service that this user can be able to use. So you must configure the access type for the local user. By default, all access types are disabled for the local user. So to do that, on the triple A view, you use the command local user. The username, for example, Caris, then the keyword service hyphen type, then some of the services you can enable include the terminal, telnet, FTP, SSH, SNMP, HTTP, PPP, or you can use none if you don't want them to access any service. 
after that you have to configure a user label a user label so to do that the command is local user caris then privilege label then you give them a value you give them a value between uh, 1 to 15 So let's look at a configuration example. After a user password and user level are configured on R1, host A can use the configured username and password to remotely log into R1. So you want to enable, you want to enable a network admin to be able to remotely uh, log in to R1 using Telnet. So to do that, you'll go into the triple A view by typing the command triple A on system view, then local user. Uh, you want to create a user with a username Huawei, then password cipher. Their password is Huawei123. Then you have to enable the service type. So local user Huawei, service type Telnet. Then you give them a privilege level. So local user Huawei, privilege level. Then you give them a number there. Uh, other than that, we also have the user interface VTY 0 to 4 that is used to create on system view, is used to create uh, uh, the user interfaces that they can be able to use via Telnet. So after you've created uh, those user VTY user interfaces, then you choose, you configure the authentication mode using the command authentication hyphen mode, then triple A, like that. Okay. So each domain is associated with an authentication scheme, authorization scheme, and an accounting scheme. So for you to be able to see the details about a domain, you use the command display domain name, then the name of the domain, for example, student. So here we want to see the default underscore admin domain. So the command again is display domain name, then the name of the domain. So you'll see information such as the domain name, the domain state, whether it's active or inactive, the authentication scheme that it's using, authorization scheme, accounting scheme that is using. After the user properly logs in and logs out, you can view the user record. If you want to see the accounting or the record, so display, triple A, offline record, all. If you want to see for all the people, otherwise you can enter their username, like Huawei. So you'll see, for example, this user, their domain is default ad, uh, admin, the, their MAC address, that they used to access the network with, uh, the service that they used, the, their IP address at that time, when they logged in, uh, when they logged off, and the reason as to why they logged off. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, take a few minutes to discuss these two questions. Uh, then we can proceed to the next topic. Again, let me just insist that RADIUS is the most commonly used protocol for implementing AAA. Thank you very much, Asantenisana.